Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 47. In this training module, we're going to be exploring how to implement our spark timing corrections and why we want to have our spark timing corrections actually utilized so that our engine runs proper in all kinds of conditions. We have a lot to talk about. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our spark timing correction factors within our Haltech Elite system using our NSP software. Our last tutorial, we talked about setting up our base spark timing tables for both a naturally aspirated and a force induction example. This tutorial, we're going to look at how we can offset and correct these base spark timing values based on different types of conditions that we might be operating in. So this will be things like air temp or coolant temp correction. It could also be things like cranking spark timing or the zero spark timing idle demand table. So let's go and jump in here and take a look at all the different correction factors we have to work with and why we might need to implement various correction factors. The first thing we're going to take a look at here and talk about for this tutorial is our cranking spark timing. This is going to be the spark timing that we source when the engine is in cranking conditions. We completely bypass and override anything that's programmed within our main spark timing table and we solely source the spark timing under cranking conditions coming from a cranking spark timing table. In order to access the table and take a look at this, we're going to move in here to our main tab, going up here into our navigation tree, and then we'll move here into our ignition tuning. Now here we have conditional base tables. These two tables are toggled on, cranking ignition angle and zero demand ignition angle. Now both of these are generally used in all of the Haltech maps and we usually want to work with both of these. Let's first focus our attention here into our cranking ignition angle because that's toggled on. If we go here into our ignition tuning and we jump here into cranking. Now this table here is based on our engine coolant temperature and it's based on a value that we want to go in and actually run when the engine is in cranking conditions. Now we specify the cranking RPM conditions based on if we jump up here into engine configuration and we take a look at our max cranking RPM. Anything below whatever is programmed here, in this case 380 RPM, it's going to consider that to be into cranking conditions. This would be sourcing the cranking fuel and this would also be then sourcing the cranking spark timing. We need to offset the spark timing and be very specific with this in cranking conditions because we want to make sure the engine can fire up as reliably as possible. So let's jump back in here to our cranking timing table. The table here again coolant temp based. At the lower coolant temp, we can see we have a generally a higher cranking spark timing. And then at the warmer temperatures, we generally have a little bit lower cranking spark timing. Now the amount of spark timing we need under cranking really depends on the engine we're calibrating and tuning. If the engine you're working with has a relatively small cam and it pulls really good vacuum, under cranking that cam profile isn't going to be having a lot of cylinder pressure bleed off from an overlap period under cranking. So you're going to find that you retain a good amount of the engine compression or the working compression ratio in cranking conditions. We generally don't need as much spark timing with an engine with a smaller camshaft compared to an engine with a large camshaft with a lot of duration, a lot of lift, a lot of overlap. In that situation, the working compression will be reduced and essentially the cranking torque will be reduced as a result. And we need to go and make up for that lost cranking torque by increasing our spark timing. So in a cold engine you might find your engine fires off and responds much better and it cranks quicker with commanding timing somewhere around 15-20 degrees with a big cam. On a warm engine you might be somewhere to between 10-15 to 15 degrees. If you have again at smaller cam anywhere between 5-10 to 10 degrees generally works well for most mild camshaft profiles for any engine that you're dealing with. But again those big Aggressive cams, you might need to get a little bit more aggressive, and that's going to be trying to build back the lost torque under cranking. Our goal is for the engine to crank and fire off relatively quickly. The cranking fuel is one aspect of that. The cranking spark timing is something else you can visit and experiment with. Now, I do want to mention, as we're on the topic um, of our cranking spark timing here, if you have an engine that, as you're cranking, it gets kickback. So you're cranking and all of a sudden the engine sounds like it's kicking back and almost stalling on itself. It can be related to too much cranking ignition angles. You may need to reduce the values in the table. Some engines I've worked with actually fire off better with negative values. So negative 5, negative 10 degrees of spark time and command it under cranking conditions. That seems to work out better for those particular engines. Um, so it's going to be on a per case basis. But just keep an open mind with your cranking ignition angle table. 
the values in here can be experimented with, um, but as a starting point, if you have no idea what you should have in your values, put your values all at something like five or 10 degrees, and then from there you can work out your spark timing. You can experiment with that a little bit. But that's gonna only be for when we're below that 380 RPM threshold. Once we exceed that threshold, it'll transition into the normal spark timing table here. Now, if Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.